Well, thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I wish I could say that ACS has its own ma mariachi band, <laughs> but you're a hard act to follow. Uh, lots of energy up here. Well, we try. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ACS is a, is a consortium, and like uh, most other consortia, especially uh, those here at this conference, and there are many, our main mission is to help our members do together what they wouldn't otherwise be able to do alone. And that can involve a, a number of things. In my role as director of faculty programs, I seek and administer grant funding to help our colleges engage in those shared endeavors. So that's kind of a, a broad stroke idea of what we do. ACS is a consortium of 16 members. We <clears throat> span 12 states, Virginia down through winding up in Texas. And so we do not have the benefit of geographical proximity. Now I've learned at this conference that geography <laughs> doesn't necessarily always mean everything turns out just fine. So um, what I guess I would say it's in that therefore an opportunity to listen actively when we go to our campuses, to engage in, um, in all levels of governance and leadership on our campuses, to visit our campuses frequently, and then to begin to connect the dots between you know, what a faculty member at Southwestern might be interested in, and then two weeks later you wind up at w and and you're with a faculty member who's interested in some of the same things, and you you connect them and things begin to happen apart from the relationships that already exist between our faculty um, in ACS. Uh, one of the shared goals is innovative instruction in, in some way, shape, or form. This is part of the strategic priorities of our campuses. And it largely means to reevaluate traditional methods of teaching and to incorporate new pedagogies and technologies. Uh, what I'm talking about today is just part of a larger effort ACS is making. Um, and, and, and one other piece of this I'll just mention is our remote teaching memorandum of understanding um, in which nine of our schools are participating and we're doing a pilot launch this fall and that is to uh, uh, teach remotely, synchronously, uh, from one campus to another, one campus to several others, and thereby fill curricular gaps and help faculty develop new uh, and, and larger uh, communities of practice in their disciplines. So we're pretty excited about that. <clears throat> I was at the Bryn Mawr Conference a year ago, and one thing I took away to um, Atlanta, where, where we're based, is this notion that, you know, all of our schools are, are resourced differently. We have some that, um, that really could benefit from the incorporation of low and no cost software that is convenient, uh, easy to learn, and also aligns with learning outcomes in the liberal arts. So that was a I was four months into my position at ACS, and that is something that stuck out. I just so happened to be at lunch with three people last year who were very well versed in, uh, in the low and no cost software that had tried and true and works well. And they actually suggested that we begin to look in the K through 12 literature and listen to what teachers in K through 12 were saying about affordable software because the teachers themselves were the ones purchasing that software for their classrooms. So that led to this project, which I'll talk about today, and we're honored to have had Teagle support in making it possible, to suggesting to faculty on our campuses that they try to incorporate new tools, um, low and no cost uh, tools, that they would find to be genuine to the learning outcomes that they have for their courses. So we're stretching them a little, but at the same time, um, beginning where they are. And what we wound up with were, were uh, five faculty at f on five different campuses in five quite different disciplines choosing a software tool that 
they wanted to learn and that would meet their uh, learning outcomes in their courses. So I guess lesson one so far in all of this is that this element of choice for faculty, choose what course, choose your software tool, um, and, and really choose how you're going to learn it. We're, we're all uh, real motivators, I think, for faculty. It actually turned out to be quite a competitive process to choose the five faculty. That's really all we had funding for. But I feel like we could have done much more of this and perhaps will do more of this. So I just wanted to give you an idea here of uh, the disciplines and the tools that, um, that were selected. And now I'd like to just talk a little bit about project design, what my role was, and what uh, the roles were of others who participated. The first thing that we decided to do was to, with some of this Teagle funding, to support a consultant helping us with this. And she is associated with one of our member schools, so it felt still like a, a consortial effort. Um, in her role, what I asked her to do was to develop a list of low and no cost software tools that would be easy to learn, that are legitimate, will be there, you know, are, have been tried and, and uh, with positive outcomes and that aligned with the AACNU's liberal education and America's Promise student learning outcomes. In other words, what we were trying to do was really to help convince some of our faculty that had shied away from the use of, of uh, technology in their classrooms that they could still incorporate these tools and be true to the liberal arts mission through the AAC news outcomes. So I, I guess it would maybe be a little bit crude to say that we were helping, AAC, AAC new was helping us be a little bit more um, proactive in faculty resistance that we sometimes get uh, with the use of software. Um, and it turned out that the consultant was able to develop a very rich uh, rubric in, in, a, in a way of the tools, the outcomes, and what particular skills students could take away um, once they were introduced to and learned the particular software that the faculty uh, selected. So her role then, um, and this happened about uh, late last spring, she came up with this document that I then took when I went out looking for faculty to participate. So the faculty I, I wanted were not those who were early adopters and way out ahead and, and really doing this stuff already. It was um, faculty who were open to the idea and that could help um, advance ACS's strategic goal of innovative instruction and, and could really help get things started amongst um, those with whom uh, they closely associated with on their campuses. So in a way, building another cadre of folks who would be uh, open to using technology in their courses. The consultant was also charged with training faculty over the summer in their selected uh, tool. So she had a lot of back and forth um, virtually with these faculty members and she also helped them incorporate the tool into their tools into their syllabi and and made sure that their student learning outcomes were tied to the AAC and use uh, framework so by the beginning of the fall we now had five faculty each using a new tool with student learning outcomes that were, were aligned with uh, this project over here, and that faculty were now ready to use in their fall courses. So that happened last fall. They had um, assessment plans, they had all of the, uh, the data in by, by December, and then AA, I'm sorry, ACS was able to disseminate through our OAR library 
uh, the, the various videos that were produced. So what we have in the end is a consultant with her, with her list of software. She produced a video on each tool as a tutorial. That's now up on the site. Each faculty member produced a video saying how it worked out. That's also, those are up on this site. And they're kind of up next to each other. So you might have a WordPress tutorial with the faculty member from Centenary College of Louisiana talking about how it actually worked, both how it worked and the challenges and the results of the student learning outcomes. So it, it really was a, a creative, uh, creatively put together project. Um, and I got the uh, permission from one of our five faculty, um, Danielle Dickens at Spelman College, she's in psychology, and she chose uh, TED Talk. And her unit in her psych class was on disc the discriminatory experiences of women of color in the workplace. And so what she wanted to do was to uh, advance and then measure the intercultural skills and integrative learning skills of students through the use of this particular tool. Um, we have a little clip here. I think um, I'm going to definitely upload these to the, uh, the Blended Learning Conference site. Um, I probably will just go ahead and, and, and go forward, but thank you for being willing to hop up here and help. Uh, so if you can imagine that um, from, from about May to December, we had the consultant generating this material. We had the faculty learning the tools and incorporating the student learning outcomes into their fall courses. We had a mixed you know, set of results and a lot of lessons learned and, and I thought I'd spend you know, a large chunk of my time talking about the lessons learned. I think the main takeaway from this session is really to, um, it's really to just think about how to encourage faculty who are potentially um, resisting the use of technology because they're not convinced that such tools, A, will be easy to use and be affordable to their departments, and let's face it, we don't always have a lot of money in our academic departments, but, but they can also talk with, with integrity and confidence that um, the tools are actually still very much going to manifest liberal arts and sciences learning outcomes. So I think you know, that's what this project did. At least it began you know, us going in that direction. So some of the lessons, one is that the, the emphasis on low and no cost software really was quite attractive to our deans, our IT, uh, as well as the academic departments. And I was really quite shocked to learn here a year ago just how available uh, this software is and and just what a wonderful resources uh, resource our K through 12 teachers are and helping at us at the collegiate level learn about what works and what doesn't work so so that that was interesting and I really do credit um, attendance at this conference the interdisciplinary coverage you saw the coverage of economics uh, psychology uh, etc really did help us make a stronger argument about the, um, the, the inclusivity of our, of our disciplines in this project. Uh, the results themselves are, are really kind of expressions of disciplinary uh, realities and outcomes, but when you tie them all together, the main message is that despite those differences, these learning outcomes can be successful in, 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 in all these different kinds of courses. So I think it almost felt to me at certain points that no matter what disciplines were included in this, it would have worked out the same, which to me is really in a nice spirit of, of democratic uh, you know, program design. 
consultant support mattered. I'm not so sure faculty would have been that interested when I asked them in June to participate in something <coughs> over the summer. Uh, the stipend helped, but it was also nice to be able to say, Jane's here, she's available all summer, here's a list of tools, pick one that sounds best to you, and she will help you learn it. And she's creating a video that um, you'll have with you all semester should you need to uh, refer to it. So, um, I, you know, in a way, it, it didn't just throw these faculty members out to, to learn these things on their own. And she also was so valuable in helping, um, helping faculty design learning outcomes. Yeah, I already mentioned that. And on the, uh, at ACS in Atlanta, we had technical assistance. For example, some of our campuses uh, needed microphones uh, that were of high enough quality for faculty videos, and we were able to provide um, those tools. So we, we did not assume that everybody was uh, equipped to uh, produce the kinds of videos we offered to help them produce the videos, but uh, nobody needed to take us up on that. And, and finally, you know, it actually really helped us create a narrative around these AAC and U rubrics uh, that are a, a narrative that is, that is really going to help us, I think, develop ways forward um, and, and, and remain within the parameters of our liberal arts and sciences mission on our campuses. So we'd like to take, thank Teagle um, the conference organizers, as you can see, I've just continued to learn uh, from last year to this year, our participating faculty, and, and you for being here. Thank you.